Hey guys, what's happening? So we are back with more Ultimate Black Panther, which so far has given off a lot of conspiracy thriller vibes that have made this story a lot of fun to pick apart. And we're only four issues in. But with that said, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so coming back, we pick up with Okoye, giving a speech to the people of Wakanda, where she tells them, I've heard from our king. Soon he will be back among us. He has revelations about this war, about our enemies, about what they seek, and how we can bring them humble before justice. I know Wakanda has a fear it is not known for many generations. The ones responsible for the death of our great king T'Chaka have yet to be found. But do not lose faith. Do not make yourself accustomed to fear. King T'Challa will come soon. We must keep faith in his strength. We must be strong to receive him. Wakanda forever. And just after Okoye gives this grand speech to her people, we're told that she's lying. And you know, on my first read through, as soon as she said, I have heard from our king, I was just like, oh yeah, that's Cap. Because the whole speech really just came off as like generic corporate talk. Like she's out here telling Xbox fans everything's okay. And I mean, no shade towards Sarah Bond. But after Okoye's speech, Shuri tells her she knows she lied, though at the same time, she understands why. In Okoye, she frames this whole thing like she's trying to give the people faith that she doesn't have, since she hasn't heard from T'Challa in weeks, and she's not even sure if he's still alive at this point. But Shuri, on the other hand, she still believes that T'Challa's out there. She's hopeful that he'll make his way back, they'll find the assassin, and end Ra and Khonshu's aggression. So Okoye is pretty much like, wow, I almost believe you. So she suggests that tomorrow Shuri goes out there and sell their people a dream, only for Shuri to pass and tell Okoye, not me, you are their queen. Which, you know, as far as Okoye, this lie, along with all the suspicious behavior we've seen up to this point, it all just really has Okoye looking more and more like the spy. And I mean, if I'm wrong about that, I'll totally own it. But later on that night, while Okoye is in bed, she feels something drip on her face. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this ain't the type of spill you wanna be catching every week. But for the kind that you do, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload. <laughs> but no, seriously, while she's laying there, something drips on her face and she's like, what is that, sweat? So for a moment here, it's like she's trying to figure out what it is until suddenly she's attacked by someone who looks like an actual Moon Knight in this universe. Cause as it stands on Earth 6160, Moon Knight's been more of an organization than an actual individual or single avatar. And by all means, this person is working with Khonshu and Ra. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But while she's here attacking Okoye, she's struck from behind and knocked out the window by none other than Shuri, who came to Okoye's rescue. And she doesn't stop there. She goes right out the window and after the assassin, who, as it would seem, just attempted to take Okoye's life. But I'm sure you guys may have guessed it by now. My first impression of seeing this attack was like, eh, this whole thing's staged. <laughs> Cause I don't trust this version of Okoye. But as it turns out, there's a whole nother twist when it comes to this assassin. We'll get to that. But when it comes to Shuri and her going after this person, I truly believe in her case, what you see is what you get. But as she's going after this assassin, she notices that it's bleeding. So she follows the trail of blood as it leads her straight to the assassin who, as it would seem, is just here in this alley waiting on Shuri. Because just moments after Shuri makes her way to her, she ends up getting ambushed by the assassin, who, during this ambush, is telling Shuri about this being the end of Wakanda, and saying things like, oh, you thought the gods would let this place reign. You think this is a kingdom. Wakanda is a scar. I was raised believing in all your lies. Kanchu found me blind, and now I see. And aside from this, Shuri can tell from this assassin's fighting stance in her technique that she's from the Dora Milaje, and the assassin even confirms that to be true. So Shuri asks her, why betray us? And the assassin tells her, there is greater power in the upper and lower kingdoms than you fools know. You raised me to be a warrior. Ra and Kanchu will make me a god. Which right there sounds a lot like Okoye's explanation from before, back when she was talking about the reasons why someone would betray Wakanda, when at the time she mentioned that it's likely because the spy, or traitor, whatever you want to call it, wanted something that the leaders or Wakanda could not give them. Which sounds a lot like how this assassin went from being part of the Dora Milaje over to working for Ra and Khonshu in exchange for the promise of becoming a god. And in just a moment, we'll talk about who hired this spy. Or better yet, whose idea it was to bring her in. Because that bit of information is going to end up leaving somebody high and dry. 
but just as she's about to strike Shuri, the assassin is struck from behind. Again. And I mean, she must have skipped the day where the Dora Milaje were training to be aware of your surroundings. Cause the girl can fight, but peripheral vision be damned. She got a serious case of tunnel vision, and after being struck from behind, she swept off her feet, only to look up and hear a voice saying, you will not harm the queen and you will not harm my blood, which of course are the words of T'Challa, who has now made his way back to Wakanda. And not a moment too late. So from here, he just ends up incapacitating the assassin so the Vodou Khan can interrogate her later. And while she's down, in the meantime, he goes to check on Shuri, who's just happy to see that T'Challa's alive and well. But before they can take this assassin to the Vodou Khan so they can probe her mind, the assassin starts glowing and then she just disintegrates, which now is just like, well, there goes that lead. And after this, next we head over to the Temple of Ra, where now, after hearing about the assassin's failure, Kanchu tells Ra that his melage failed. But the way that Ra sees this, he's more or less looking on the bright side here. No pun intended. Because the two of them wanted a death out of this, but instead the result was fear, and Ra says that has to be enough. And Kanchu thinks that this is Ra underestimating Wakanda or playing with them, but Ra just lets him know that's not the case. And he goes on to say their king is dead, they fear us in their ranks, their strength was their safety, Kanshu, and we have taken it from them. So next, Kanshu tells him, you underestimate T'Challa, only for Ra to tell him, I estimate him accurately. He knows our names, not what we are. He knows we seek power, but he does not understand what that power is. He still believes in his gods, his withering and impotent gods. When people turn to their king and see fear, they lose their will. When kings turn to their gods and see weakness, they lose everything. I have tired of playing with spies and assassins. Gather the willing, we will destroy Wakanda by the light of the moon. Which right here this shows us with Ra coming up with this plan and saying I have tired of playing with spies and assassins. This now lets us know that he no longer wants to deal with the spy that we saw in issue two. And it's not like they know exactly who this spy is cause all they really knew and trusted was that this spy wanted Wakanda to fall. But what this tells us is now Ra's recruiting his own assassins and making his own plans. So whoever that spy might be, it's likely that they're in panic mode and it's possible that they're no longer safe depending on how close they are to T'Challa. But following this conversation, we head back over to T'Challa in Okoye where now she is chewing this guy out. She hasn't heard from him in weeks. She didn't know if he was dead or alive. And regardless of where she actually stands in all this, Okoye had to operate in the unknown for weeks. So I can only imagine her frustration here is coming from a real place. And T'Challa just tells her that he was protecting them. So Okoye tells him, as I was protected tonight, cause you know, there was an assassin here just earlier. So T'Challa's like, I should have been here. But for Okoye, that's not the point. Cause for her, it's not like she's some scared little girl who's defenseless, who needs somebody to watch over her. But instead, it's the fact that she was left in the dark. Which again, regardless of how you see Okoye, she has a valid argument. So she tells T'Challa, no more secrets, not between us. So he agrees and he tells Okoye, these men, Ra and Kanshu believe they are gods, and I know what they want, and it frightens me, my queen. Everything's about to change for Wakanda, for Africa itself. Our knowledge of the world, it's just shadows on the wall. I have seen the light that casts them, which right there just refers to the discovery we saw T'Challa make just before coming back to Wakanda. So following this, he tells Okoye to meet him in secret at the Temple of the Sacred Dead, and he lets her know not to tell anyone about this meeting. Not the Dora Milaje, not the Vodou Khan, not even their own spies, Foxel and Annan. He just instructs her to make her way there, in silence, and trust no one. Because now T'Challa believes that they need a new circle of trust. The smallest circle. So the next morning, Okoye follows these instructions, and she makes her way to the temple. Where upon entry, she meets this new small circle, who T'Challa calls the Circle of Force. Who, aside from the two of them, it's made up of Eric Killmonger, Shuri, and Storm. And it's just hilarious to me the way that Storm's looking at her. <laughs> like, oh, this Okoye? I'm not impressed. <laughs> Let me stop. It sounds like I'm trying to start something. But once again, we see T'Challa using the same method as far as putting together the short list of people he trusts. And now it's changed because of this new information that he's discovered. And I can't wait to see the details. And so now real quick. I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.